good afternoon there, sweet peas. Basic prepper mom Myra here. Sorry, I have no makeup on and I'm outside working, which is why. Um, so I'm just kind of doing a fence. We are getting some, um, let's see if I can move this a little bit. New additions to our homestead here, if you want to call it that, our little homestead. And we do have a little homestead. Um, so I'm just kind of doing some fencing right now. Uh, we're putting up hog panels. That gives you a clue. Um, to, uh, you know, be able to house them properly. Um, but I want to talk real quick while I'm doing this. So we talk a little bit about, um, sorry, I'm bugging my eyeball. It happens when you're outside sometimes. Um, we talk a little bit about being, we, we talk a lot about being prepared. But we talk about building those communities and, and building the communities that are beneficial to each other, that have kind of this symbiotic relationship. And I think too many times we kind of get into this mindset where we want to do things because they're, they're right and because they're nice and we want to help people because they're nice, but they don't necessarily fit into our plan. And I know that sounds really harsh, but here's what I think needs to happen. So just my little hint and tip for you guys. Um, start making a list, make a little binder and make a list of everyone that you know that you think might be a good idea to have in your community, have in your network. Friends, family, doesn't matter. Then once you've got that list compiled, go back down and for each one of those names, write down what they do, what can, uh, what can they do that would be beneficial to you, to the community, to homesteading, to prepping, to networking, to survival, whatever the situation. Write down next to those names what services they provide, what they can do. And I'll just kind of give you an example real quick. Um, so we have raised um, our own poultry for probably 15, 16 years now. Uh, we raise meat chickens, uh, chickens for eggs, as well as meat turkeys. And um, we process them out as well. We actually do, uh, for our county fair, for the last, I think, three or four years, there was a couple of years they didn't have poultry because of the stupid flu, bird flu that was going around. Um, but we've done that for quite a few years um here we have our own equipment and so forth my husband and i work really well together really fast okay we can raise and process our own um poultry uh the the critters that will be going in here um are going to be small enough they're a heritage breed of uh critter that um that we can actually process out ourselves we don't have to have a processor we don't have to have a um um somebody to come out and, and do it for us. We can actually uh, do the whole process ourselves with the help of a friend of ours who used to be a meat processor. So that's actually really good. Um, we have dairy goats. We have miniature dairy goats. Um, we get milk from the dairy goats. I make cheese. Uh, you can make obviously soaps. You can make lotions. A lot of stuff that you could do with uh, dairy goat milk or goat milk. Um, plus if we have an animal that's down or something, goat milk is a wonderful replacement um, very nutritious, uh, very nutritious, sorry, uh, for whatever animal that we happen to be bottle feeding at that time. Hopefully, uh, we try not to do that too much because it just, when you bottle feed something, I know a lot of people like to bottle feed because, you know, they like the experience and everything. We have two babies that we have to bottle feed right now. Unfortunately, we lost their mom uh, right after she gave birth. Um, and I don't like it. Uh, to be honest, it's not practical. It takes up too much time. It's expensive because I don't have any more goats in milk right now. So we actually have to, I have to make milk for them. Um, I have a formula that I use. I don't use the powdered formula stuff, um, but it's expensive. It's time consuming. There's so many other things that I could be doing um, rather than bottle feeding the babies. Uh, thankfully, they're only on two feedings a day right now. Um, and hopefully in the next uh, couple to three weeks, they will be totally weaned off. So, um, but I don't, I don't recommend it. It's just not practical uh, for whatever situation you're in. Um, oh, well, unless you're in a situation where you just want pets and you just want babies. And, but when you're, when you're truly in a situation, a homesteading type situation, it's just not practical. You have so many other things to worry about on your property. Um, so make your list of the people that you like, that you know, don't put anything down yet. Just make a list of everybody that you know, everybody that's kind of in your circle of friends network. 
then go back and start putting information by each of those names. Um, if somebody knows how to weld, if somebody is a mechanic, if somebody knows how to build things, um, if somebody does um, beef, if someone does, you know, dairy cows, kind of start really um, looking at your list. That will give you a really good idea of realistically who you should have in your circle and realistically who is going to be there for you if you should need them. Okay. And then look at yourself. Think about what you can offer to someone else. Think about why someone else would want you in their network. Now, I know a lot of preppers are very big on being very secret, very confidential. Um, you know, they don't want to share it. When it's down to survival, they're going to survive on their own. However, unfortunately, not all of us are totally 100% prepared for that. So that's when we have to start looking at networking and communities. The other factor is that if we are in a really, truly, truly, um, crap hit the fan scenario and the world as we know it is just gone you're gonna need those communities you're gonna need those network you're gonna need that to rebuild whatever society we have just destroyed um, which I know that's that's very worst case scenario but get your list going make a list make sure that you know who is on your list um, make sure that you know who is going to be beneficial to you and I know that sounds really horrible and they're very selfish, but you kind of have to be that way when it is a really bad situation, okay? Now, typically my husband would be out here helping me with this whole fencing thing. However, um, he is still recovering. He um, completely ruptured his Achilles tendon and uh, they misdiagnosed it for six months and ended up having to have surgery and had it, having to have a cadaver tended tendon graft to his Achilles. So he is completely um, off of it for quite a while. He actually was out here helping us with the with the T post a little bit earlier and I told him to go inside because he was starting to get sore and his foot was swelling and I'm like yeah no you can't do that. So he hobbled back in the house. Um, anyway so get your communities, get your networks going, write down your list and start figuring out who's going to be there and who's not going to be there for you. All right. So that's what I have to talk about today. Hope you guys have a great, amazing day. I will keep you updated. I bought some other cool stuff that, uh, that I will share with you at uh, another point in time. Um, ooh, we have a storm that is supposed to be coming in. So I am looking at my shelter over there for my goats and my chickens, and I need to go batten that down a little bit better. So I'm going to take a break from this and go batten them down because they are the priority right now. These guys won't be here until next weekend, so. But I will talk to you later. You guys have a wonderful, amazing day. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, reach out to me. I'll try to help as much as I possibly can. And we'll see you next time.